Having a child with muscular torticollis can be frightening, but you should know it's a condition very familiar to the medical community. Muscular torticollis affects one in 9,000 children. During the next few minutes, you'll learn what causes muscular torticollis, why it's important to treat quickly, and what treatment options are available. You'll also learn about a unique surgical procedure that leaves almost no scar and gives children dramatic instant relief. Dr. Fernando Burstein, a board-certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon who is also board-certified in head and neck surgery, pioneered this endoscopic treatment. Dr. Burstein did his residency in head and neck surgery at UCLA and then went on to complete a residency in plastic surgery at Yale University. He has completed a fellowship in craniofacial surgery at UCLA and he has more than 25 years of surgical experience. Dr. Burstein's unique endoscopic surgery for the treatment of muscular torticollis has already been used to treat more than 200 children. First, a look at what causes muscular torticollis. It can be caused from the way the baby is positioned in the womb, especially if there are twins or triplets. It can also be caused during birth, such as from the use of forceps or suction devices, even traumatic deliveries. Sometimes there is no known cause. Basically, muscular torticollis results from a tear in the neck muscle. When the tear heals, scar tissue is formed, and that scar tissue keeps the muscle from growing. The shortened muscle results in the baby or young person's head pulling to his or her shoulder. If left untreated, muscular torticollis can result in permanent facial bone deformities of the jaws, resulting in a bad bite and facial asymmetry, including in the eye sockets. In babies, it can also cause problems with balance and delays in motor skills, including crawling and walking. Patients can experience pain in the side with torticollis. A study in China showed these facial bone deformities tend to worsen with age. How is muscular torticollis diagnosed? The patient is evaluated using family history and a physical exam. Doctors look for a raised shoulder or facial distortion as well as facial asymmetry. How is it treated? Physical therapy is always a first step. Stretching of the muscle is crucial. A molding helmet may also be prescribed to treat cranial deformities. Some doctors also use Botox as a primary treatment. What is Dr. Burstein's approach for infants who have been referred to him? First, he works to confirm the diagnosis. Next, he recommends vigorous physical therapy, and depending on the case, he may recommend certain types of collars, such as a taut collar or a rigid collar. He'll recommend an orthotic cranial helmet if the frontal bone is asymmetrical. These treatments can last from 9 to 12 months. After 12 months, he evaluates the treatment, and if the child has full range of motion and can stay straight at rest and has no other problems, the treatment has been successful no surgery is necessary. Unfortunately, not all children respond to the physical therapy treatment. For those children who are still having problems after 12 months, Dr. Burstein recommends surgery to cut through the scar tissue and allow the muscle to function and grow properly as well as minimize facial deformities. What makes Dr. Burstein's surgical technique for treatment of muscular torticollis unique? Dr. Burstein developed an endoscopic procedure using the same instrumentation used in arthroscopic knee surgery. The technique leaves a tiny hidden scar behind the ear and is commonly called keyhole surgery. In addition to the obvious cosmetic benefits, this technique allows for great precision. During endoscopic surgery, the treatment area is magnified, allowing Dr. Burstein to see exactly where the nerves are so that he can cut the muscle in precisely the correct place while avoiding possible nerve damage. Precision involving the nerve supply to the muscle means less chance of muscle atrophy. Another crucial nerve is the greater auricular nerve, which gives sensation to the ear. You can see in these images where the healthy red muscle is, where the crucial nerves are, and the white area, which is essentially dead muscle tissue. Once the scar tissue is cut, the muscle will grow correctly. Prior to the surgery, Dr. Burstein will have patients 18 months or older get Botox injections to nearby muscles which may have also shortened. What happens after the surgery? Dr. Burstein recommends the use of a soft collar for seven days. After those seven days, patients will start vigorous physical therapy that usually lasts six to 12 weeks. The patient is seen for a post-op exam at three to six months. What is the surgery like? 
It's done on an outpatient basis. It usually lasts about an hour and requires general anesthesia. Dr. Burstein uses dissolvable sutures for ease of care. If the patient is over 18 months old, a small amount of dissolvable collagen sponge with a steroid solution is placed near the muscle incisions to prevent early scar formation. The patient takes oral antibiotics for three days and a few days of pain medication followed by the use of Tylenol as needed. A soft collar is placed on the surgical site for pressure and for comfort. The collar is removed for bathing and sleep and can be discarded after seven days. This view shows you how the surgery works. The L shows the mandible. The parallel lines show the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the one affected. The curved linear incision behind the ear demonstrates where the incision will be made. The endoscopic telescope tunnels down to the area from the incision behind the ear. Once in place, the surgical area is viewed on a high-definition screen. The endoscopic scissors are used to cut the sternocleidomastoid muscle, preserving the greater auricular nerve marked by the large arrow and the spinal accessory nerve, which provides the nerve supply to the trapezius muscle. This is marked by the small arrows. All the small twigs coming off the main nerve are preserved as much as possible. This is an endoscopic view as seen on the big screen. The scissors are on the viewer's right. Below, one can see the white scar tissue, which has replaced the living muscle. This is the scar tissue that is causing the head tilt in the torticollis. In this slide, the scarred muscle is seen. It is no longer red, the color rear steak, but rather it's white like gristle. The white tissue won't respond to physical therapy, Botox, or anything other than surgery to actually free the neck. After the procedure, you can see that the normal muscle remains. The scissors point out the spinal accessory nerve, which feed the shoulder muscles. At this point, all of the muscle has been released. Now that all of that damaged muscle has been released, all that remains is the normal tissue below the muscle. Now here are the results of this surgery. This patient shows what typically occurs after surgery. The child's case was fairly severe and couldn't be solved with physical therapy alone. Notice in this view, before the surgery, the child's head is tilted, and you can see the asymmetry in the face. But in the after photo taken just a few months after the surgery, the child's eyes are even to the horizon. The neck is straight, and the head is held up straight without any difficulty. Many parents want to know how safe this endoscopy procedure is. The results are impressive. Out of the more than 200 endoscopic torticollis surgeries Dr. Burstein has completed, one patient needed to have a small open incision to cut off a small vein. Another patient needed one additional surgery for scar tissue. Out of more than 200 surgeries, there have been no infections, no blood clots, and no nerve injuries. Every patient had marked improvement. The younger the patient at the time of surgery, the better the overall result. In fact, it's best by 12 months old. Dr. Burstein's recommendations, if surgery is to be considered, it should be done by the time the child is 12 to 14 months old, if possible. In conclusion, the endoscopic surgery Dr. Burstein uses is successful both from a cosmetic and functional perspective. It's a safe and effective alternative to traditional surgery. The procedure is usually done on an outpatient basis. Outcomes are dramatic and can be seen right away. Dr. Burstein also recommends intervention as early as possible to prevent bony deformities to the face. For more information, call 404-256-1311 or visit atlplastic.com or atlantafacialplasticsurgeon.com.